So you're itching to start sowing seeds ready for the growing season. And deep down, you know, it's a little bit too early, but you ignore that and you go ahead anyway. I completely understand. I'm the same. I have to really pull back the reins and hold myself and try and be patient. But the truth is, us gardeners, it's hard to be patient. We want to get closer to those harvests. So what I did is I thought, okay, what's the happy medium I can settle with? And I came up with a list of seven of the most productive edible crops that I could sow in February. So I can really scratch that itch and get started on my seed sowing mission. And in this video, I'm sharing that list with you. Let's kick off this list with true Samata chokes, which are also called sun chokes. And per square foot, they're easily one of the most productive crops you can grow. However, they're totally underrated. They deserve way more respect and are continuing to be more and more of a winter staple crop for me. As a perennial, you plant, harvest, and then replant them in the exact same space. We've been growing ours in the same location for 15 years. Now, be warned, they do spread, but that is a good thing in my opinion, unless your space is limited. Unlike potatoes, true tomato trucks also appear as and when needed, which is a real blessing. And again, I don't have to worry about frost protection. They just look after themselves. Typically, I start harvesting true tomato trucks towards the end of November and continue right through up until around mid to late February, where unfortunately, uh, sorry to say it guys, uh, true tomato trucks are a no dig nemesis. It's impossible to do it, no dig. You want to just fork through the whole area, pick as many tubers up, and then what you do is you create a trench around a foot deep, 30 centimeters deep. You line the bottom 10 centimeters, four inches, with well broken down compost or manure, and then you space tubers one foot 30 centimeters apart with the same distance between rows, and then you just rake the soil back over, and there it's done and dusted. And my favorite way to enjoy them is after washing them, I will put them in a roasting tray with a load of oil and a load of salt and roast it and they are just so delicious. Now for the second crop, and it's probably something you're not expecting. It's calendula, also known as pot marigold. Calendula is grown as a hardy annual, but it is in fact a short-lived perennial. And if you leave your calendula plants in a polytunnel or even outside over a warmer winter, it will come back and give you a really early flourish of flowers. It's absolutely amazing. Now, even though it's the flowers that are edible, the sheer abundance of flowers that calendula produce, especially if you keep on top of the deadheading, means that they absolutely deserve to be in this list. And now is a great time to make sure that you can get some seedlings started. So come April time, April, May, you can transplant them outside a month earlier inside and enjoy blooms right through summer into autumn. You can use the petals as a saffron alternative in cooking, add them into salads, or include them in refreshing summer drinks. What's your favorite garden snack? Is it sweet strawberries, sun warm tomatoes, or the humble pea? For me, it's definitely peas. Being able to walk through the garden, grabbing handfuls of pea pods and just eating them there and there throughout the summer, is such a blessing. Peas are also pretty hardy, which means starting them undercover in February is a really good choice to go with. Now, if you've never grown peas before, a good starter variety that I've always had consistently good results with is Ambassador. If you have a polytunnel or a greenhouse, or in here, I'm in a polycrub, one of the best ways to utilize this space is to grow an early crop of peas. So even though you can sow peas ready to transplant later in the year, right now in February, I would highly recommend sowing peas right now so you can get an early crop as soon as possible to really extend your pea season. Moving on to another legume, a broad beans or fava beans. And these are really one of the most iconic late spring, early summer harvests for any kitchen garden. They are easy to grow, hardy, delicious, and super productive, and you can also eat broad bean shoots. The only main thing to be aware of when it comes to sowing broad beans is that they send out a deep tap root. So you either want to grow in cardboard tubes or in deep cell module trays or in deep cell pots. If you start your broad beans now, you can expect your first broad bean harvest outside in June, 
but you could potentially stretch it and get your first undercover harvest in May. I'd like to give an honourable mention to field beans as an alternative to broad beans. They're basically like a dwarf broad bean. The pod and the beans are smaller, but they're incredibly productive and they grow really tall and I highly recommend every gardener at one stage over their gardening career try field beans, both undercover and outside. We're now moving on to the allium family where I'm going to group two together. Onions and also shallots. Now you can start onions from seed, a lot of people like doing it, but for me I love starting onions and shallots from sets. I just love that kind of instant plant. There's a bit less faff involved and yes people will debate about how good the harvest is and also whether you're cheating but also the expense but ultimately I think gardening needs to be down to what you enjoy the most and for me I enjoy planting sets the most but whether it's seeds or sets February is a time to start your onions and your shallots. The sixth crop is potatoes. Yes, it's potato season again, primarily new potatoes, also known as first earlies. What I like to do is I like to start these off in containers because it's still really cold for potatoes. They're super tender. So you always want to make sure that if frost threatens, you can either move them into a greenhouse or a polytunnel, or you can move them indoors if you don't have a structure like this. I also only like to start with a small handful of buckets, perhaps four or five that I plant up with new potatoes around mid-February. So when I usually plant new potatoes in mid-March, it means that these sowings and these harvests come around a month earlier hopefully in May into very early June to start extending that potato season. Once you've harvested your new potatoes, place that compost back into the same containers and then you can transplant your squash or your beans or even some tomato seedlings in just so you can get extra productivity from the same compost and the same space. The seventh most productive edible crop to sow in February is peppers. These need to be done as soon as possible and you'll need some kind of heat map or a heated propagator to aid with germination because they do like to have base heat or base temperature coming through to really help kickstart that germination. Now peppers are unbelievably productive. My favourite last year was a jalapeno pepper La Bomber. It was just utterly laden. You may be surprised that tomatoes haven't made this list. After all, they are one of my core crops and they are incredibly productive. But the truth is, tomatoes grow faster than peppers. And because of this, I don't like to hold seedlings in pots for longer than needed. And chances are, if I started tomatoes now, I'm not going to be transplanting them until at least the start of May. And that means a lot of potting up, a lot of looking after them, a lot of trying to stop the seedlings stressing, and then that leads to poorer crops. What I like to do is just be a little patient with tomatoes and start those in mid-March. I really believe that tomatoes need as much tender loving care as possible. Now, if you want a fantastic tomato crop this year and you want to make sure that you get prepared, this video right here is gonna be your friend and ensure that you get a beautiful tomato abundance this summer and autumn.